If you're dealing with shin splints, you know it sucks, but you don't necessarily know what kind of shin splints you're dealing with and then how to work through it or how to correct the problem. So we're gonna go through those bits and pieces so that way you understand what is going on and then it can apply some strategies to correct those shin splints. So, uh, why do shin splints ha happen? Most typically, it's because of overloading. It's going back to ideally a running activity too fast too soon. It can be a lack of foot control or just control of your overall lower extremity. It can be just too much load overall, poor footwear. There's a lot of mechanical components to it that overall it's just excessive stress in the lower leg. So it's overstraining the muscles here and back here. So specifically the two muscles, the tibialis anterior in the front, which is this muscle right here that's in the front of the shin. And then also the one back here you can't see behind the calf called the posterior tibialis. So I'm not sure which one's more common the other doesn't really matter, but it's typically one or the other. What's interesting though is that those muscles are used a lot through the gait pattern. So what the gait pattern is for the foot is heel strike to foot flat or ankle rocker and then to toe off. And when we go through that, those muscles here do have a lot of activity of controlling the foot. So if we do have four put foot muscle control here, or say you're a, a pronator or you have a flat foot, you may have some uh, increased risk of some shin splints because what the muscles inside the foot are not doing, the ones above have to make up for. So first and foremost, We'd want to do some, make sure we have some good uh, intrinsic foot muscle control. We have other videos for that. We'll, I'm not sure what corner it goes in, but we'll put the foot tripod exercise in there. But number two, um, outside of just loading, I mean, uh, you'd want to reduce your load if your running program is too fast too soon. But a great way to build resiliency in these shin splint muscles is working through the entire cycle of the muscle. So what does that mean? We want to work through the concentric and the eccentric phase of the muscle through the full range of motion. Concentric, for the, using the bicep as an example, is shortening the muscle with contraction. Lengthening the muscle with contraction is the eccentric, sometimes known as the negative. The example for a pull-up would be if I'm pulling up, it's mostly concentric, and then when I'm going down, it's eccentric. So we're going to work through that for both muscles at the same time with one exercise, which makes it easy, so you don't have to worry about, you know, am I doing it for the right muscle? or whatever it may be. So uh, next step is going into the actual exercise itself. So ideally we want to go barefoot so that way we're not uh, we're not cheating or having slip and slide through the shoes and all that. So go barefoot and we're going to go up to a surface like a wall or a post something else to give you some balance and control. And so we're going to do both at the same time. Now you can use do one versus the other working on the you know the side that's a problem but I think doing both is a good thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to work through the gait pattern of the foot and then we're going to cycle back through and around. So we're just going to go slow and control through this. So I'll show you what I mean. So we'll start here foot flat and we're going to start at heel strike, which is basically the outside of the heel. So it's toes up and then toes out on the outside of the heel. We'll start and hold here. You can see I'm contracting my tibialis anterior naturally. And now we're going to work on that eccentric phase of that by slowly lowering my foot down to foot flat or ankle rocker phase. And then I'm gonna go to toe off. Good, which now eccentrically loads my tibialis anterior and now concentrically loading my posterior tibialis here. Now we're gonna shift the outside. Why? Because now we're gonna load the eccentric phase of the posterior tibialis. So by being on the outside of my foot and dropping the heels down nice and slowly, I'm getting that negative or eccentric phase of the posterior tibialis and behind my shin, okay? So that's what's happening there. Now we're just gonna cycle through without thinking of the technicalities of it. So we're gonna go on the heels on the outside and we're gonna slowly come down to foot flat and then we're gonna toe off through the big toe, not curling the toes, push, 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 slowly shift the outside and then slowly come down to heel strike, stay on the outside of the heel, lift the toes up, slowly come down to foot flat, toes splayed, and then into toe off. Really push, 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 push without curling the toes. Shift to the outside and slowly come back down. Good, to work one foot, you do, you work, let's say my right side is the affected side. I'm gonna make my left side more like a kickstand, just kinda here, and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna start on the outside of the heel. I'm gonna go slowly to foot flat onto toe off. 
hold a lot more challenging being mostly on my right leg. I'm gonna shift to the right hand side and then slowly come back down where it's a lot more challenging because about 90% of my weight is now on my right hand side. All right, so if you have any pain while doing this, I mean, you shouldn't, unless it's really bad, you shouldn't have it on two feet. But if you can control that while it feels fine, go to the one side and see if you can control that. And if that's fine there and you should progress, you can even add a little bit of weight as well. No reason why you can't. So I can still use this for support here. And I'll use my, I'll just use my left side so you can see. I'll go here on my outside of the heel, slowly drop down. I can go to toe off, shift the outside, slowly come back down. And one more time, toe up, go to foot flat, to toe off, good. And then shift the outside of the foot and slowly come back down. So even just doing a couple of those, and I don't have any shin splints right now, no pain, but it's challenging just to do that for a couple cycles. So I'd work through that, work within your tolerance, but ideally you do maybe five to 10 cycles, take a break, repeat it for a couple sets, and repeat that every day for, you know, give it a couple weeks and see how things are feeling. Uh, and But first and foremost, make sure that you're reducing, if you're running too much or are you intensely, quickly got back into sport or activity, at first turn the volume down on that, work on this, and then reassess right at that point and slowly progressing your activity from there because this is not a magic quick fix, but it does help strengthen the, those muscles and tendons so that they're more resilient for your activities. But if your activities are constantly poking at it, you're never gonna get better with it. So we wanna pull back activity, do some of this stuff, slowly build up the activity back up so as you increase your load or activity, your shin muscles can handle it. So if you like this video, make sure that you give this a like, a subscribe, hit the little bell ding for future content when it does come out. And thank you for watching.